Hey, hey everybody, this is Larry. I'm doing this poem as part of a contest, so you're gonna watch me live as I go through my thoughts as I'm coding. Uh, there'll be an explanation near the end, and for more context, there'll be a link below on the actual screencast of the contest. Uh, how did you do? Let me know how you do. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and here we go. <coughs> Q2. Count triplets that can form two arrays of equal XOR. Given an array of integers, oh, okay. Oh yeah, so this one, uh, well, I feel a little off. Maybe all the sniffles in the beginning as well. Um, but this one, I was, I think I spent some time trying to figure out whether I can do better than n cube. Um, so n is 300, right? Which n cube is 27 million, which is really cutting it close. But then it it took, and I was thinking about how, how to do it, and then I ended up doing it with C++, um, because I thought that n cube, at the time, I thought n cube would be 27 million, which which is cutting it close, uh, I think, for lead, lead code, for n cube. Maybe you could get away with it, but it depends on how strict, or not strict, maybe, the test cases will be, and I just wasn't confident about that particular piece. And now I'm in this moment. I'm thinking about well, can I do better than n cube? Um, yeah. And I was like, eh, maybe not. Let, let's do C plus plus so that I, if, if there's ever uh, a running time thing, then I could, you know, then I could just it wouldn't be uh, like it wouldn't factor in as much if that's an intended solution. So so yeah. So now I'm just setting up the array. I would say, so the reason why I took 10 minutes on this problem, I think, is actually because uh, I did it with prefix sum. Um, I, you, so you definitely can do it with prefix sum, and in the explanations later, you, I, I explain why the prefix sum works. But looking back right now, looking at my uh, thing, and I, I, you kind of see me hinting at trying to do this, but I was just really worried about off by once that I didn't really think it through. Uh, in retrospect, I should have uh, did what I am doing here, where I didn't really need the prefix sum, I could just calculate on the fly. Um, but I just wasn't doing it quite right. So now you see me doing prefix sum. Looking back, I probably spent five minutes about this because I was doing it with prefix sum, which is correct, but I, it was not necessary. What I did before with the int a, um, like like calculating just on a streaming basis, as long as you don't put in an additional for loop, you're probably okay. And that's probably why it was a Q2 and I made it more difficult than it needed to be. Um, because I think actually, I think I just, to be honest, I think I rushed it a little bit as well, uh, mentally, even if it doesn't seem like it, um, because that led to me uh, just, I don't know. Like, I feel like I was not optimal in this problem. And I here, now I just uh, want to double check the i, j, and k. Um,
Oh, yeah, and I spent a silly amount of time on... Well, this one is okay. I think I was just thinking about off by one, uh, which, you know, I, at this point, uh, I spent way too much time on this. Um, but, but I should have known... I, the other thing is that I should have known better here is that... Uh, so actually, I think I mostly got the... Um, I think I mostly got the index right, like I knew what to look for. But the problem is that uh, if you're really good at uh, bitwise operations, uh, then you'll notice what I'm doing wrong. And usually I'm better about this, but again, today maybe it's just one of those days where uh, a little bit silly. So I went and I was like, okay, that's way not right. So um, now let's print this out. But the short answer is, uh, well, okay. See if you could spot the bug immediately. Let's say there's no off by ones. Uh, so uh, see if you could spot the bug. Leave a comment below if you spot the bug before I actually do it, uh, before I actually fix it. But uh, but yeah, I was like, okay, maybe there's an off by one, uh, which that one actually, I think I was like, okay, but it's still not right. Um, and now it is about 10 minutes in. I end up spending at least three more minutes on this silliness. Uh, but I think if I just not did prefix some, this would have been a much faster problem. Um, Here I printed out, I was like, wow, this is a lot of stuff. And I had to mentally uh, just figure out where the indexes are. I spent, uh, there's a lot of time wasted on this one. Uh, I think if I had been able to submit as I, when I did, um, then this would have been an okay problem uh, for me. I mean, like the problem is okay. It's just, I would have considered it that I did okay. But this debugging was uh, painful. And yeah, see if you could spot the bug because I took me a while. So maybe that's like a fun challenge at home. Uh, and in a fun way, this debug statement actually does not help at all. Um, like, hmm, that doesn't make sense. Well, well, well it, it does by omission, maybe. <laughs> Um, so if you if you caught it before I fixed it, mad props to you uh, because I really took a while. But the answer is that the equal operation has higher precedence than the bitwise operations. Um, so so yeah. And now I'm able to be like, okay. At least it is more correct. I might have an off by one, but at least it's more correct. And now I'm able to use my debug code to be like, okay, where am I off? Uh, zero to one, that should at least be a two. So I have an off by one there. Um, I also recommend in general, just printing out stuff because you, know, you have to learn how to debug. Um, not every contest, not every uh, interview is gonna go 100%. And you wanna prepare even those cases that you, know, you do well. And off by one is definitely a place where well, things happen. And here I'm looking at the constraints again because I'm like, just making sure that I didn't misread it. But I think, I, I don't know. I wasn't focusing on the white energy because, because that doesn't make sense of the output. Yeah, looking, and then the answers looks good. So I submit, and 
<sighs> that was a hard problem for me. <laughs> Q2. Count triplet count triplets that can form two arrays of equal XOR. Yeah, so this is prefix sums. Uh, I took a while because for some reason I um yeah, I mean I, I thought that n cube is a little bit too slow maybe, but uh but it's actually not n cube strictly. It's n choose three, which cuts down uh, it's about like six times faster or something like that. Um roughly. So that's why I initially turned into C++. I was like, oh, maybe I needed to be the fast loops. But it turned out not to be necessary. And I think after that, though, um, even when I was convinced, um, I was just a little bit off by one in certain places. Um, and I wasn't, I think the thing that I had a little uh, needed vertifying was that, that this would work properly. Uh, because I worried that I would uh, XOR a number with itself, and obviously you can't do, or you can do it, but when you do it, you get zero instead of, and that's what I was scared of. Uh, but actually, it ended up being pretty straightforward, and I ended up taking 10 minutes on this problem, uh, but it probably should have been faster. Um, but the idea is that, um, to exp actually explain the problem instead of just what I did. So the, the in this one, um, you can note that the big key to uh, no, uh, solving this problem is noticing that, um, well, let's say you have some x sub i, uh, x or x sub i sub i plus 1, x or i sub i plus 2, dot, 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 a sub, uh, x or a sub j. Um, so that's equal to a sub 0, x or a, and, you know, maybe we can space it out a little bit. Just so that the visualization is easier. Uh, a, oh, and then dot dot dot, a sub i, uh, xor dot dot dot, a sub j, right? Something like that, right? Uh, X, is this whole thing xoring the prefix? Uh, this prefix, that's before the uh, i minus 1. Right, okay, so this is so something like that. Uh, and once you do notice that, then, well, it's prefix sums. Uh, and I, maybe you don't even need it to be honest, because maybe you could do some smart things with the loops. Uh, but with prefix sum, it became easier to just focus on the on my off by ones because I knew I would have potential issues with off by one because of what I said about the J and the K. Uh, and the other thing that was a little bit uh, maybe odd, but maybe not, is that um, even though I has to be strictly less than J, J has to be less than or equal to K. Um, and I think I did have an off by one, which as soon as I fixed, um, I, it was able to submit, but I was still not confident after that. So I was just, you know. Um, but yeah. Cool. So that. And then after that, you could just try all possibilities of IJK um, as this given, and then it's a little tricky to get off by ones, right? But that's pretty much it. Uh, but that, yeah, so it's been a while since I did one of these um, code reviews. So let's actually do a couple of code reviews and see where I can learn, because I definitely did not solve this uh, contest very well. I ended up at 175th or so. Uh, so the second one, I took way too long. It's just pre I did a prefix sum, but as you might have saw on the video early on, I was like, oh yeah, I should just do a running count, um, which is the same idea. And I started it, but I was worried about off by once. I really did not. I just needed to slow down and think about it more. Um, but instead, I end up taking more time as a result. Yeah, similar to kind of these things where you just keep a running, running track, and then. And that's pretty much it. Wait, this is different. Hmm. Well, this is an n square, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I have to read about this later. Uh,
Oh, I see what it's doing, kind of. No? That's actually really clever uh, that I didn't really think about at all. But basically the idea is that um, if the current XOR sum is zero, then um, then there, then there, uh, then for every index that's inside that index, um, like so, basically, you give an i and j. Uh, if if yeah, if you give, for a given i and j, then if uh, the one in count. From the, like if everything in between is zero, that means all the indexes in between those two indexes will be will be true because that's by that like if there's equal then then the XOR will always be wow that is a because you're dividing them in halves and uh, by def, by definition because you have if a x or b is equal to zero that means a is equal to b. Um, and thus, uh, and this is, and this kind of reworded that back, uh, and, and it's true for all indexes. Wow, that is actually a great answer. That's, uh, I think that's the kind of stuff that you get when you're good at math. <laughs> uh, but yeah, everyone else, okay, like go, but I still either way, <laughs> uh, I should have done this really quicker. Uh, no, because it's known to be good anyway, but. Where I should have done something like this with the rolling, uh, rolling number, uh, but I did not, unfortunately, uh, because I was worried about off by one. But instead, I also went off by one, so that didn't really save me. Um, yeah, same thing here with the n squared. So, well played. I learned something today. That was kind of good. Uh, I don't know if I learned enough to be able to do it next time, but that's still good. Uh, cool. This is an n square prefix sum that also does the same thing. So, yeah. Uh, what did Alex do? Man. What? <laughs> uh, okay. What? Uh, okay, I mean, it's just for you. It, it's. Um, it's the same idea as the other ones. Uh, with uh, it's the same idea with the n square algorithm, um, where it uses the dynamic programming to do it that way. Um, that's clever, and it, to get zeros and then sum up all the counts in between. Uh, that's a pretty clever way of doing it. Uh, I was actually thinking about something similar for n square, but I couldn't come over it during the contest. Or at least I didn't want to spend more time coming over it, so I yoloed a little bit. Uh, okay. Uh, 